Hi everyone, um, today my presentation will be focusing on medieval music. Now please remember this would be um, presented for CSET music students. This is the first of many when it comes to history and uh, because the syllabus has changed, these are some of the topics when it comes to music history that we have to focus on. So we are starting from way back, which is medieval music, which is the first of its time, and we are coming up to our present. So please sit back, relax, and enjoy. All right, so the first thing that we are focusing on is the medieval period its name and the date so medieval music is also called or not the medieval music but the medieval period is also called middle age now for cxc they could possibly put these two dates but i'm focusing on the one on top which is 400 to 1450 or they can put 600 to 1450. um the medieval period is also known as the dark ages so this is what we want to focus on um i'm just giving you all trying to paint that picture of what uh happens or happened during this period when it comes to music now there are some things that we need to remember or to note that took place during this period. Some things that are on the slide and some things that are not on the slide. So just bear with me a little bit. So for one, songs for knights as they rode off into battle. So a knight, for those who don't know, if you look at the top left hand corner of the video, there's a guy in a blue armor with a riding a horse in blue as well. That is a knight. So they would put on these metal armor and ride into battle. All right. Songs for men in fields and women in the home. So in those days, men were the singers, right? It was usually based off of men singing and not so much the females of that time songs for dance and uh, nobles in the castle so the castle the king and queen they would have had particular songs for them so they were called nobles at that time so they had their own specific music then we had chants for monks priests and we have songs for mass which is the catholic church and the last thing is music had no balance some other things that i want us to remember is that most of the song not all most of the song within that period would have been latin or written in a latin language another thing was the church in that moment was most known so it was the highest of the high that period of music was for the church the catholic church so those are some things that i want you all to remember as well as it was also known as the dark ages so let's focus on the primary rules we had three things that music was basically used for right so it was used starting from the bottom it was used for entertainment like we said before for the nobles when they're having a little shindigs it was used for worship which is for the church like we said the church was a huge thing in that point in time in history and we have philosophy right it was treated like a science um that directly dealt with astronomy so medieval music can be broken up into types so what we're going to focus now on are the types of medieval music that we have so we had two types of music we had sacred music and we had secular music 
please remember we had sacred and we had secular now let's dig into that and see what the both of them mean so sacred music of that time and if you're drawing reference to the picture i hope you can kind of guess what sacred music would have meant so it would have mean So sacred medieval music is known as music of the church, right? Only the priests and the monks, and I should add there, the nuns, were educated and musically literate. Only the sacred music were written down or scored out as we would say now. Only men and young males could have sing. So I'm saying it again. So the priests and the monks were educated in music lit in music literate or musically literate, I should say. Sorry. Um, that means they knew what they were doing. Then, then we have only sacred music were written down, which means in layman terms, it means only um sacred music was scored out literally physically writing then we have only men or young males would have sung in that period so because that period of sacred music being in the church we have the monks so the monks would have been males and they would have been singing majority of the stuff then we come to secular medieval music so we are coming to now secular so secular medieval music what i want you to keep in mind is that sacred is about the church it speaks about god and jesus and uh, um anything that deals with crafts right so it's holy it's blessed anything like that on the other hand now secular is the actual opposite so it's anything that does not speak about god that does not speak about christ that does not speak um about believing in in jesus and and all these church music or gospel i should say um it deals with that so there could have been r b rap hip-hop soca anything as long as it does not speak about god it was secular saying that again once it did not speak about god or jesus or anything about the church and being blessed and all of that for the love of it it was secular so we reach now to medieval musical characteristics what i want to draw to your attention on the left hand side of the of the slide there's a score that score that you're seeing is exactly how the music would have been written before good in the medieval period so what you can observe is that there is no balance the notes look a little funny from what we are accustomed to now Remember, we said that the, it was mostly in Latin, so I wouldn't doubt if this language is Latin or pretty similar to Latin. Don't hold me to it. Um, the star, I'm not seeing any treble clef, I'm not seeing any bass clef, but trust and believe the nobles or the nuns, the persons who would have performed this music, knows exactly what is on this phone. Don't ask me, I don't know. <laughs> So let's move on to those characteristics. So the music was a cappella. And what does a cappella mean? There's a slight meaning below it. It means performing voice only without any instrumental accompaniment. So when I say instrumental accompaniment, I'm talking about only instruments that can perform harmony. You can have a drum set with somebody beating time, but that is not harmony. That is an idiophone, which means it's any instrument that can produce song from hitting 
for slapping or scratch and rubbing, etc. But it does not produce a pitch, a standard pitch. So anybody who is singing without any background music or harmony or accompaniment is singing a cappella. Then we have Gregorian chant, also known as plain song. So this is what we call a sacred monophonic music that is sung a cappella by male vocalists. Now let me tell you all, this was actually known as the first monophonic music produced. Sacred music, I should say, because it was performed by the church, by the monks, by anybody who would have been associated with the church. But remember, it is for or sung or was sung by male vocalists. Then we have melismatic, or some people would say melismatic, melismatic, <laughs> right? And this is a set of words that will usually have notes set to one symbol. So, for example, there's an example later on that is there but for example we have one word like hallelujah hallelujah which is four syllables and each syllable might have gotten 10 notes set dragging it out a little longer i have an example later on have no fear another characteristic is that it was monophonic and i did mention that in the Gregorian chant as well as a cappella if you want to call it that so monophonic means there's one melody line without any accompaniment so you could have a choir singing but they're all singing one melody line the same same thing nobody is changing everybody singing in unison all together second set of characteristics let's move on we have homophonic so homophonic is a melody line just one with harmonize company I think that is kind of self-explained so you have a melody line and you have an accompaniment so you're singing and you have a keyboardist accompanying you with some harmony notes there just spelling in the little gaps then we have polyphonic so polyphonic is any two or more independent melody lines that can be performed at the same time so let's use this example you are singing your own melody line and i have selected a song in my brain that i want to sing both independent both could stand on its own but guess what we both are singing it at the same time to the same rhythm same timing and it fits well together yours could stand on its own i could stand on my own so that there is what we call polyphonic music and just remember polyphonic music can have two or more independent lines being performed at the same time organum so organum was an original chant that is performed either after either a fourth below or a fifth above so it's taking an original um chant that is either sung a fourth below or a fifth above that is in another set of characteristics one the melody moved by step so it was very narrow very close to each other right and also it used diatonic notes so it, it wasn't spread out as far but it was pretty simple it stick to the book stick to the rules didn't go outside of that the form was strophic so they had strophic form there as well which means it had a verse might not have a chorus but it had another verse come up might not have a chorus it might have another verse so there are verse upon verse upon verse it could have gone on and on and on then we have troubadour which is a male poet musician 
from the south front. Now, let me just point this out. The poet, musician, was mainly famous for singing secular music. I just wanted to point that out there. So it was most mostly or mainly known or famous for secular music. So what we have here is a piece of score that we are going to look at and have some examples of music or, or I should say characteristics in it. Let's listen. So, before I start it over, I just want to point out certain things. For one, there was melismatic. And what I mean by that, so here we have the word alelu that is continued and dragged down to the end and ended by la. Right? So what we want to check is the notes on top. So we had all these notes here. I'm just going to circle them. Was just for this one. Right? All. And then we have lay. All these notes here represented lay. So it wasn't just one set or one note for the four syllables, which is one, two, three, and the fourth one below. It actually had multiple notes set for the syllables. Just look at Lou. So Lou had literally a half a star and two other lines just for Lou. It went on and on and on. So that is melismatic. Another thing about um, medieval music, like we said, the melody moved in steps. So when we are looking, for example, we are on the second line here. Just look, just look at this phrase here. There's many. We're just going to focus on this phrase here. So we have the notes close to each other and then moving down. Just like they're walking up and on the stairs, and now they're going back up the stairs, and then they went down the stairs, down the stairs, up the stairs, down the stairs, a little leap, nothing big, up the stairs. But it was mostly 
stat wise on the second page you'll realize that it had a cappella where everybody was singing in unison and there were also um no instruments or accompaniment following there it was also homophonic because we had the melody line on top and we have some form of harmony being sung by the males the other males that is another thing con continuing with medieval music there was males singing this song so it was two one on top and then there was a ton of below singing the lower notes so now we are going to focus on composers that was famous during this period we just want to focus on four so we have the composers we also have the years that they were there um not not that they were there but the years that they produced music right and uh, their language of choice so what i have here is the instruments that are linked two medieval period i've categorized them into three sections so we have the aerophone which is any instrument that needs air to produce a song idiophone which is any instrument that can produce a song from scratching hitting rubbing slapping anything of that sort quadrophone is any instrument that needs strings to produce a song now the strings can be plucked bored touched anything of that song but the main thing is that it needs strength to produce a song so please take a moment you all can google it um google the instruments and what they looked like at that point in time but it is very fascinating for me to pull up these instruments i do hope and this is going to be my ending note i do hope that you all truly enjoyed this video and that it assisted you in some way or somehow for the medieval period i want to say thank you for watching and uh, please keep safe